The sky, too, is getting crowded. Computers don't yet control air traffic, but they do sort out all the shifting facts and present continuous, up-to-date information to the human controller. Okay. November Golf, float and clear. These days, you don't have to go to a computer center to get information or solve a problem. In this factory store, the computer presents information in normal language and abbreviations. The touch of the storekeeper's finger feeds an order or inquiry straight into the computer, and the answer comes straight back. The architect can design straight onto the computer and it will work out for him the cost, the materials, and the time the job will take. If he changes the details, the computer will change the calculation and finally print out everything he needs to know. With another program, he can find out the amount of daylight given by the windows in his design. At the touch of a button, the computer shows the light distribution in the room. The designer, who requires a complex three-dimensional shape, part of a car body, for example, can start with a flat sheet, manipulate it in any way, and observe it from any viewpoint. And then the computer will automatically produce an exact blueprint or just as easily, it will control the actual machine tool that does the job. Computers are meant to make work easier. Those springs are going to foul in a crash stop. I don't see why they should. Anyway, let's check. If you're designing a monorail and you have a problem with the springing, no panic rush to reference books. Hire yourself a share of a computer and use the program called Coils. Tell the computer what it wants to know and it designs the coil spring for you. The speed of the logic unit is so much greater than the input and output speeds that the computer handles this and many other tasks apparently at the same time. More and more people are coming into everyday contact with computers. In thousands of banks, computer terminals are taking over much of the clerical and accounting work. Relieved of most of the clerical drudgery, a smaller and more intelligent staff can spend more of its time on the interesting and human job of dealing with customers. The man on the shop floor can already be in instant communication with the computer. And the day is coming when the computer will carry out unskilled manual jobs as it has already taken over unskilled clerical ones. With more computing power, we shall cease to waste people on low-grade manual work and find better uses for human talent. Some young people are already being taught by the computer. A generation is growing up which will find the computer terminal as familiar as electric light or the telephone. And we are only just at the beginning of the computer age. Well, I suppose computers are all right, but I don't know what all the fuss is about, because they're not really very revolutionary, are they? We are at the beginning of a revolution. It depends on two facts, both of them proved, but neither of them as yet exploited. The first is that computers can be programmed to be intelligent. The second is that they can learn from experience. It's very hard to define intelligence either human or machine. Usually, human intelligence is measured by carefully designed problems. Already, computers are as successful at these tests as university candidates, and sometimes even better. 
This is a sliding block puzzle, not of great interest perhaps in itself, but of immense usefulness to us in our attempts to develop general problem solving and learning computer programs. Computers are very good at doing a precisely defined job. It is difficult to produce programs that give them general abilities of the kind that is common to humans, but progress is being made. This computer has been given a number of facts. It is then asked a question which requires the power of deductive reasoning and gets it right. Gomo Q is a quite complex oriental game. The first person to get five stones in a row is the winner. The experienced player will always beat the novice. Here a good player is playing a computer which has only the simplest tactical knowledge of the game. The computer plays the cross-hatched counters. The human wins the first game easily. But even by game three, the computer is quite hard to beat. As it examines possible moves, its memory is infallible. It will never make any move mathematically similar to one that led it to lose any previous game. But a good human player still wins. After about 16 games, the computer is virtually unbeatable. The more skilled the human opponent, the more the computer has learned and the better player it has become. These examples may not seem very dramatic, but they are the beginnings of something quite new, as significant as when the first wheel rolled, the first gunpowder exploded, or rocket fired, when Watt saw a kettle lid rise, when Hargreaves invented the spinning jenny, when Marconi tapped out the first message, or when Rutherford first split the atom. One thing that computers won't be is selfish. Uh, uh, human beings have a certain amount of selfishness built into them uh, in order to survive, and there's no reason why we should build that into computers. Today, computers are mindless slaves. They are becoming immensely powerful and versatile assistants. This is bringing about the greatest revolution that the human race has ever known, a revolution which will enhance the value of human talent but diminish the value of unskilled human labor. This revolution could lead to terrible consequences, or it could lead to the greatest advances ever for the human race. Which of these things are to happen is up to us.